Hi guys, Vim Speedway here. Today I'm going to be presenting a tutorial on how to do orchestral music in Dreams on the PlayStation. Now I'm going to assume that you know how to read an orchestral score and you know the basics or Italian music terms so if you don't know how to do that then this probably isn't the video for you but if you do and you've already had a go at this in Dreams then please stick around. Now the first thing that you might notice when you say enter a whole heap of uh, notes off the score, put it into dreams in the right instruments, and it just kind of sounds a bit meh. Um, that's perfectly normal. Um, the good news is there are some tweaks that you can do to fix that and get rid of the meh and have it sound a bit more like an orchestra and less like a synthesizer or, you know, just a synthesized program and put a bit of emotion into it. So the first thing I like to do is set up my uh, instruments now these are pretty much all the media molecule instruments they tend to serve their purpose pretty well there's a couple of exceptions but for the most part you can use the MM instruments um, so you've got your woodwinds up here and then the brass and then you've got your percussion I like the samba triangle um, which isn't an MM instrument um, just for personal preference and then you've got the strings down the bottom now I've just used all the sustained uh, sounds at this stage for all of these instruments there's usually three options you've got your sustain you've got your staccato and your marcato um, now you probably at, at some stage you'll be using all three of them um, just depends on what sort of melody you've got this is just an example so I've just chucked all the sustain ones in because right off the bat what you want to do is select everything and uh, you'll see on the tweak menu here the volume slider has variation on it and you'll see that that's for pretty much every instrument there's a variation gap in the volume I don't know why they set it up like this is the default but what you want to do is get rid of it because what it does is um, by sliding it up to 100 and then sliding it back down say to about 70 now there's, n there's no variation in the volume what it'll do if that's on you see I'm put it back on there is it'll decide randomly where in this band to put the volume and you don't want that. You want it, if you want to set it as a volume, you want it to play that volume. At least I do anyway. So you get rid of that right off the bat. So now all of these um, sounds that are selected have got lost their variation slider and are now playing at 76. We'll, we'll just leave it there for now. That'll get changed later, but we'll just uh, leave it there for now. Now the next thing you want to do is add reverb to everything. Well, I certainly do anyway. Um, the presets, it's usually channel B. And it's usually somewhere around, yeah, 14, 20, 10 percent. I like having it set on channel A. And already, you can, I don't know if you can hear, but you can hear it's got much um, more echo, like you're playing in a concert hall. Um, that'll be more evident once there's um, more instruments playing. But um, yeah, around 10 percent on channel A for every instrument. So now every instrument will be set to that because they're all selected. Um, if it starts to um, compress because there's too much happening, you can lower that down to maybe 5% or something, but 10% is a good starting place, particularly for quieter pieces. Um, so that's the next thing you want to do. Now the final thing, which is a little bit uh, cumbersome, we'll just deselect all of that, is you want to go into the um, instrument sample sounds, the slice map of you. Now these are all the samples that are used for this instrument. Now there's always some variation, some of them are louder, some of them are softer, but they're all usually on the softer side. So what I do for all of them is I you know, double click on one of them, to, so you can go onto it, double click, select all of them, and then push up on the D-pad, and it'll turn all the volumes up on everything. For some reason they always come out too quiet, um, and across all the instruments you get inconsistent volumes. So if, by doing this, it at least ensures that you know an 80% sound, 80% uh, volume is the same across all the instruments. And in particular, the strings. If you go down here, we look at the violin section. Look how thin they are. There's virtually no volume on any of these. So you're just going to be struggling to get any kind of sound out of your violin section. So you turn that all the way up. See now, they're, now they're much fatter. So now you'll get a um, comparable sound. And it's always easy to turn things down rather than turn them up. Um, so if it's too loud, and turn it down easy. But once you sort of hit that max max level, you might be having it at 100 volume and still getting no sound out of it. Um, so anyway, um, that's something you should definitely do for every single instrument. Um, 
So unfortunately you can't do that as a bulk thing, you're going to have to do each one individually. So it takes a little bit of setup, but it's definitely worth it in the long run. And of course, when you uh, add, oh, so yeah, so if you do that, all those changes, then if you just copy paste, then all those changes will apply to each one um, as you carry on um, transcribing your music. Um, if you want to bring in more instruments, so say you want to switch to a flute marcato, well then you got to, if you want to, you know, you got to go in, come in here, um, flute sustain, or change that to marcato. Um, you have to do all those changes. Uh, where is it? There it is. So you'd have to go back and once again go, go in, oops, not that one, this one, change your volume, get rid of that variation in the volume, and um, yeah, do your reverb, you go to 10 or whatever, and then go in here, do your samples, oh, that's interesting, um, get out of that, um, yeah, come in, select all, turn everything up, and yeah, do that every time you introduce a new instrument. Bit of a pain, I don't know why Media Molecule have set it up that way, but it is what it is, and that's something you can do to fix um, some of the sounds anyway. Um, another thing, um, this is more for uh, gameplay uh, simplicity. Nearly every uh, instrument that uh, Media Molecule has got has got effect fields. It usually just has the two, you've got a louder one, you've got a quieter one. Um, you're probably not going to use those, so just delete them. Um, it saves on gameplay memory in the long run and it'll run smoother, it just optimizes it a bit better. Um, and you want to do that for every instrument as well. Once again, it's a pain, but that's how they've set it up. You're probably not going to use these fields. If you want to use get something you know, louder or softer, you can just use this one and you just slide this one around and it's much easier. Um, there's a couple, no, no. Oh yeah, the other thing, with the um, the sound envelopes, you want to make sure that they all are started at the beginning. I'll just make, I'll try and make a bit more sense out of that. So this one here, I'm hoping that you sort of know how these um, envelopes work. So this first one here is how long it takes for the sound to reach its full volume. So you want to have that right at the start, basically, for every instrument. Um, so then, otherwise it sounds like they're always coming in late. There might be rare exceptions where you want it to be a bit, you know, have a bit of wah build up, but most of the time, you're just going to want to hit it right from the start like a real instrument would sound. Um, you're probably not going to play around with this one. This is the volume that it will sustain at. You probably want that at full volume for every instrument. Uh, this one is how long it takes once you release for the sound to die out. Um, you usually don't play around with that one, you usually have it a little bit out, so you get a little bit of echo, but the reverb will take most of the echo, um, that'll take care of that. Uh, maybe for the, the harp is probably one of the few exceptions where you really want that all the way out there. Um, you can see how long that lasts for, and that's just not realistic at all for, for an instrument. Um, for vocal stuff as well, sometimes you want these, these to be more like that. Um, but for your normal instruments, some, a shape like that is pretty much what you want. Um, yeah, I mean, this double bass section sustain, you just cut that right back to there. And you can see how quiet this one is as well. Look how flat that line is. So you'd have to go in here, look at all your samples, turn it up. Now your double bass section is going to have some volume. Okay. Um, so yeah, you copy-paste those for the whole piece once you've sort of done all that uh, groundwork at the start. Um, another thing is you really want to be smart with your uh, piece selection because there are some things that uh, Dreams is good at and other things where it's not so good. So some of the things that I think uh, that it works quite well is the brass section. If you can feature the brass, um, they seem to go really well. And this is something that isn't actually explained but um, makes a huge difference is the spice on all the brass, on all the media molecule brass instruments is they have the basic sound and that is really quiet because I haven't changed the samples um, so we'll just do that, so once again they're really quiet turn them up, now we'll have a bit of sound coming through um, so that's your normal trumpet sound, if you hold down the spice button which is L2 you get a completely different sound you get that really brassy sound, which is really, really awesome in the louder sections because it also doesn't seem to use a lot of the bandwidth for the audio. Um, you get that nice brassy sound, uh, you can do that, and that's across all MIDI Molecules brass instruments, so the French horns as well. Um, these, oh, they're quite loud at the moment. Um, add a little bit of volume there, but then that's normal.
but then add the spice and, uh, and you get that sound, which is you know, that real strident brass sound, which I love. I used to play brass. So um, I'm a little bit biased, but anyway, so brass is good. Um, string pizzicatos are pretty good too. They're very reliable sounds. Um, so I like using those. Um, anything that's sort of punchy, anything that's got a lot of staccato sounds, um, sort of quick loud noises, um, tend to work well. Because the trouble is, if you've got, one thing that doesn't work well is the loud sustained uh, sounds because uh, you tend to get uh, compression, audio compression. Um, you might get a bit of distortion, a bit of a crackle. Um, but you know, once you hit a certain volume, you can't make things any louder. And with the full uh, orchestra sound and lots of percussion and brass, um, it just doesn't quite have the same intensity as a normal orchestra would. So you can do it, but it doesn't just doesn't have the same feel to it. Um, so I found uh, lots of John Williams stuff actually works quite well because he does a lot of sort of solo lines and then all the rest of the orchestra is playing sort of punchy rhythms and so you don't get the compression problems because the sound sort of hits and then dies very quickly rather than being sustained. Um, just a couple of other things that I avoid. The Coron Glaive media molecule sounds dreadful so just use an oboe. Um, that tends to work better. And violins, uh, the sustained violins just don't have the same sound, they don't have the same vibrato or emotion that a full orchestra would have, particularly if you've got long sweeping legato sounds, romantic sounds, uh, it doesn't do those very well. So we're, if, if your piece has got a lot of that with the violins trying to carry the sound of the orchestra with that sort of romanticised vibrato, it's probably not going to sound quite as good. Um, so I try to avoid a lot of those um, sorts of pieces. Now I've talked about the sound envelope, so we'll get into an example. Um, so that's all the groundwork you have to do before you even uh, put a note down. Now we'll get out of that, and there's a piece that somebody... Um, oh yeah, why not, we'll save that. That, um, that I'm going to have a look at. Um, this is not, ma it's not made by me, this is made by Sneaky Falcon, who has had a go at Waltz of the Flowers by Tchaikovsky. And now, all the, the sort of first look, so it's very well presented, it's well organised. Um, obviously knows how to read a score, because as far as I can tell, all the notes are correct. And uh, we'll just have a quick listen to the start. We'll just sort of skip over that and we'll get to uh, we'll get to the start. And that's generally going quite well. Um, and you might listen to that and think, oh, what are you going on about? There's nothing wrong with that. Um, there's a few things that we can do. First of all, all the things that I've talked about before, we've got to set up all the instruments because, if you have a look at this, we've got this, the volume um, variation sliders are way spread out. So we're going to fix all of that for starters. We've also got these effect fields here, which aren't really necessary. Um, they, they're hooked up to these keyframes to change the volume of the instruments. Um, now that's a bit of a long-winded way of going about it, um, and I'll sort of it might become more clear once I um, start adjusting some things. So we're going to get rid of all of these because these all these keyframes are to do with volume. So we'll scrap all of them and all of these effect fields right off the bat. The other thing about using all these extra f um, boxes is it adds up to your gameplay thermo. It might not seem much, but it all adds up over time. And if you look at the um, thermometer, I think it's already um, yeah, it's already up to 32%, and we're not, well, we've done a fair bit of the piece, but we're only probably halfway through it at the moment. And so if you, anyone else wants to use the piece for something visual, well, they've already lost most of their gameplay memory um, and can't really do much with it. Um, now, this one was attached to the tempo, so we'll leave that one as it is. And another thing I'd 
do, just for simplicity, is combine both oboe parts on the one line. Uh, it just, once again, it makes things easy. If you want to adjust the volume, you only have to adjust one thing. And you've got less boxes and it's less taxing on the gameplay. Anyway, there's little optimization things. That's nothing to do with the sound. So what we'll do with all of these, we'll just select them all, like so. And we'll do the business. So get rid of the variation slider. We'll drop it down to about 70 for the minute. We'll adjust that later. And now the French horns have got this at the start. We'll cut that out. So now they'll start right at the, um, they'll come in loud right when their note starts. You do the reverb, so channel A, about 10%, and then we need to adjust, oops, not that one, the sample volumes. Um, I may cut this out for time, but one, yeah, once you've done one, then you can just copy paste it on all the other ones anyway, so bang, so now they're all done. Um, we'll do the clarinet. Hopefully you'll be able to tell just a little bit diff a little bit of the difference. It's quite thinly scored, so it may not be immediately apparent. They're already quite loud as it is. Um, what the sound difference is going to be from what you heard the first time. Um, a lot of oh and oh that's another thing with the bassoons. They come with the um, dynamic compressor turned on. Turn that off because um, you don't want it to sort of smooth out. You want the variations in volume um, just as a Matter of course. Um, so we need to go in here and go here. Uh, the bassoons actually sound really good. Um, props to the bassoon sampling because um, that sounds really good across all their um, different types of bassoons: the legato, the staccato, and marcato. Um, I keep going to that one. I want this one. Now French horns are usually uh, fairly quiet. Not too bad. Um, I'm not sure if these are the uh, Marcato or the um, Sustain ones. I've got a sneaking suspicion they might be Marcato, but we'll have them the same. So it's quite loud, so... So if you had all your French horn condensed on one part, this process would be a lot easier. So we'll, maybe we'll try it about 50. So what all those um, um, keyframes and effect fields were doing was putting in crescendo, decrescendo. Um, now we don't need to do it that way, it's a much simpler way of doing that and that is to just grab a blank field and then you can do everything at once. Of course it's going to affect the harp as well but that's probably not a huge problem. So you just, if you want a crescendo, decrescendo, you probably you know, set it to about 12 or something and then you can move the sliders and then that'll do all the instruments at once and then you get that little crescendo down, down. and then it's so much easier to adjust as well because you've only got one effect field doing everything so if you want to move it, if you want to adjust the sliders, if you want to adjust the volume you can do that just in one, bu in one press so, um, so that might make things a bit easier. It's sort of a quality of life thing. Um, also, the harp does seem to be a little bit uh, loud. They, and once again, we've got the variation sliders on this. So um, let's select all of them. And cut them down. The harp is very loud naturally, so you probably don't need to um, turn that up in the samples. And we'll give it the same reverb as all the others. It's just coming along in the background. Might turn up, could be a little bit louder than that. Now we're getting a lot of blur. The, the, see how uneven the sample sounds are through that section. I'm not sure if that's because there's different volumes on the piano roll. Um, 
Yeah, see, they've got notes that are doubled up here. Um, so we can delete those double ups. You can see it's very subtle, but the color is actually slightly different. Um, you can see this isn't as see-through, so I can see there's actually two samples there. That's a single one. Um, so that's why we're getting that um, uh, unevenness in sound. I'm not sure if that's going to be across all of these. There's a good chance it will be. Yeah, that's doubled up. That's doubled up. Um, so for all this stuff, you want to try and make it as smooth as possible. Uh, is that a double? No. Um, as, a, as a normal um, orchestra would sound. As normal players would sound, that's all uh, looks okay. Um, not sure if the horns are doing it as well, because you might have just done a copy paste, and yeah, they're all going to be the same. So we'll get rid of that. Um, is it on here? I'm not sure. Yes. Well, that may have been an intentional thing, because you were trying to make those bits louder. Maybe it was just an accident you were made in your copy pasting. That's a little bit more even, and then once you've done all that, then you can do your um, get your effect field and get your because you want a crescendo, decrescendo throughout all of this. I'm assuming because that's um, da -da -da -dum. um, so you'd want to put that about 20 or something. So that's what you find um, as you're doing transcribing. Half of it is just doing the notes, and the other half is doing instrument balancing. Because um, it's just about adjusting something, going back listening, does that sound right? So now we should get our crescendo. There's still a note that's going burr in there. Um, no offence. <laughs> By the way, I'm not... Oh yeah, here they are. Um, I hope, um, I'm not doing this to you know, uh, belittle you or anything, because um, it's a very good start, but uh, I'm just trying to point out some of the mistakes. Um, and some of the things that sound odd. So there's another one there. So now that should smooth that section out a little bit. There's another one. I think it's the clarinet. Yeah, that one. Um, and what's going on here? Oh, it's another one there. Okay, we'll get rid of that. Um, and hopefully that's all of them. <laughs> Um, sometimes you'll find not all the sample, sa s sample sounds are of similar volume. Some might be a bit louder than others, so you've got to go in here and it'll show up which ones are playing at a particular time. That one. So this one was coming out, standing out like a sore thumb. So what you can do is you can, um, where is it, tweak slice. So you go to tweak the slice and you can zoom it out here and it's, you can just narrow it down a little bit so it's not as loud um, yeah it's better but anyway we're going to move on so i've got the harp doing its thing Once it gets down to this bottom register, it sounds a bit odd. It, yeah, it harps. I want to either soften that, or even just cut a lot of this out. It's a condenser, you don't need all of it. Um, I know you probably put a fair bit of time into it, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes less is more. But that's up to you. Now this part sounds very nice, but the French horns are going to be trying to supposed to be carrying this, and they should be a lot louder than what they are. Oh, excuse me. Um, I'm deleting all these volume fields um, just for simplicity. Um, I presume that you were trying to do crescendos. I'd really recommend just doing this technique for your crescendos, decrescendos. Um, it's a lot easier, a lot simpler to adjust and a lot less uh, taxing on the gameplay thermo. Um, so these ones, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, bang, select everything and do this. 
to say it's about 50. Now, unfortunately, mm. you've lost all your um, volume adjustments, but um, I think we need to, to go back to square one with a lot of that, unfortunately. Um, just to cut out all the uh, unnecessary effect fields. Mm. I'm just going to trim that at the start. And, and yeah, you'd really want to have all of these horns on one line, um, on, yeah, on one, one sample line. Just, it's, maybe that you find this more convenient for transcribing, but, um, it just, it makes, it's, it's quality of life improvement for me anyway, um, makes things a lot simpler f for the way I do things. Um, but you feel free to, you know, keep doing it this way. That's not a game breaker. Now, once again, we've got double notes here. I'm uh, not quite sure why you've got those. Maybe you're trying to emphasize those notes a bit more, but what, Probably because that's where the crescendo is. Na, 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 na. Yeah, you probably wanted those a bit louder. But um, what I'm going to recommend... You've probably got it on all these ones as well. Yeah. So I'd get rid of all of that and use an effect field. Is it on these ones as well? No. Um, use an effect field to get the volume changes. A lot of the time, those volume changes, though, they're not even um, noticeable a lot of the time. Um, so even just not bothering with them is, is an option as well. Um, so we've got this one as well. I'll just get rid of these ones. And then we want to do this and just put them at full volume. There wasn't a lot to change there. And then you just copy paste. They, they're going to change all your names. They're all going to be French Horn 4 now. lost the top line for some reason. That was weird. Um, let's just... so it's just really quiet. Yeah, so you probably want to have this one louder, because that's the, that's the melody. Yeah, that's so much better. I don't think I did the reverb even. No, um, that'll definitely help. Uh, well, 11 will do. Um, they're all back there. And we can even add a little bit on the end there. Probably have even more on that top line. Yeah, see this is the thing, you get you get to 100 and you're, now you've got nowhere left to go. So, we might do the samples just quickly. Not a lot to add there. Now that might be a bit too loud. Um, oh, you can hear that echo at the end as well. So, it's probably a bit too much, so we might cut that back. The other thing with the French horns to experiment with is there's a very good one. Um, it's probably one of the few times that I don't always recommend the media molecule instruments. The, French, the cinematic French horns, um, they can often uh, be a big improvement on the standard ones. The only trouble is they're in a different octave and they've got all this weird stuff going on. So I get rid of the dynamic compressor. Um, get rid of this... That's a spice slider, I think. Yeah, we don't... No, oh, well, we're not going to use the spice. Um, we'll get, have them coming straight in. And we want the reverb. There's a lot of times just experimenting which, which option might be better. Um, and we want full volume. They're already on full volume. Let's see what that's... In. Uh, the other thing is, this is in a different octave to the other ones, for some reason. The media molecule one is sounds an octave too high, so you have to put it, you know, like you've done, you've put it all the way down in C2. Now this needs to be... needs to be up there, I believe. That's it. Now once again, that might be too loud overall, so we'll turn that down, we'll turn all of them down. Here. 
And then you can put your little, um, these are probably too loud as well, actually. Um, what are they on? 52. Yeah. I'm going to turn all these down. But of course, I haven't done the, um, you'd want to set all this up right from the start. You'd want to do the slice mappers. Oops. Select all, please. There we go. Um, and then, so then you've got a more consistent thing. So this would probably want to be down somewhere, um, 30, 20% volume, I reckon. Which is very soft. Why are you not selecting everything? Uh, maybe they're already at full volume. Okay, we've done that. Uh, and this one... Contrabass. Okay, so then we'll t definitely turn these ones down. The violas seem to be a lot louder for some reason than all the other strings. Um, Okay, and then we want to replace all these across. Except the cello is not the... That's not the right cello. Yeah, you've renamed all of these. You really, really want to know if they're the uh, sustain or marcato. I, I think that's staccato there. Sounds like cello marcato. Um, just a little tip. I think the cello marcato is one of the worst string instruments that they have. For some reason, the samples in this sound nothing like cello. Um, I mean, listen to that. It just sound in the lower registers. It's a little better, um, but you probably just want to use a sustain for that one. But. Um, What's our, what's our reverb on? Most of the problems can be fixed just by adjusting the reverb, really. Um, so if you just chuck it on... 10% 10, 9, 10 channel A, um, it makes a huge improvement. What's standing out to me is that cello is a bit loud and the clarinet isn't loud enough. Um, so we're going to do this. That's quite loud as it is. Oh no, that's a bit better. Um, chuck that as a copy. Um, so we'll go to here. going on with this one but it doesn't need to be as loud as that um, and this one seems to be very clipped so you can just add a bit of a tail on that one okay that's sounding better and this is a repeat of you you'd go and copy paste all these oh we can do that Whoa! Didn't need that. Let's stick those in the way. There we go. And you, once again, you'd apply all the changes. So we can actually have that one. It's the same as that. Ah, now this um, string run up here um, sounds awful. Uh, probably not your fault. Once again, the violin's uh, always a bit of an issue. Um, it sounds like using the Marcato setting as well, as you've used all through here. And it sounds really synthesized um, and not good at all. Um, so what I would recommend is, let's get rid of that. Um, well, first of all, get rid of all these volume things. Oh, there's so many. Um, the woodwinds sound fine, nothing wrong. They sound really good. Um, but the Marcato setting for these, I don't think is going to cut it. Um, we've got the problem though of using the strings to try and carry the bulk of the heavy lifting. So we want violin sustain. Uh, where are they? Uh, eh, come here. This one. Um, Chuck it there for the minute. 
Um, so yeah, you bring something new in. So you got to do all the changes. You got to do the volume. You got to do the reverb. You got to do. Um, what's the other one? The samples. Let's look how quiet they are. So now you actually get some volume out of them, and we'll cut out uh, all of these. Um, all of these effect fields. Because we don't need them. So, now we'll copy that over. We'll just start it here. Um, once again, I'd recommend having first, second violins on the same player. Um, now, the volume on this is going to be insane. <laughs> It's a little bit on the loud side, so we'll select all them, just turn it down a bit. Now, oh, God, that is loud. the um, problem with the violins and all the strings really is in the samples, there's always a they're always starting from zero volume. Um, well, this one isn't too bad actually, but if we go into the samples, we go into tweak. And zoom that in. So there's always this little section at the start where it's a lot quieter than the rest of it. So, which is fine at the start of a phrase, but in the middle of a phrase, you get this bois, 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 um, which isn't how violins sound at all. I mean, look at this one, it's got this really long tail, tiny little tail. So, what you can do is you can trim those down to make it not as obvious. Um, you might think, well, why don't I just start it here? But then you get a pop at the start of every note, you get that sound once again doesn't sound like a violin so it's, it's sort of um, you know a compromise between you know, having well, trying to find the most realistic um, legato violin sound um, so it's not a perfect system um, there's probably not a lot to, you can do about it as you know as the sample takers because there's so many different ways a violin plays um, so many you know all the phrases, up bows, down bows, whole bows, changing bows. Um, it's quite a difficult thing to capture in just a few samples. Um, but we do the best we can. Those ones don't look too bad. We, and these are low ones anyway. There's a little bit on the start there. And so hopefully this will just smooth things out a little bit. That can come in a little bit. To make it sound more like a legato line. That one's very quiet overall. Um, now, which one? So that was done to that one. So we'll copy paste that to all of these. Um, and so now you're getting that little pop at the start, which I don't like. But it's, it sounds more like an orchestra than it did before. Sound, to my ear, that's that's sounding a lot better. Um, and so you'd want to change all of these ones out as well. I think you'd want vi viola sustain, cello sustain, double bass sustain for all of that section, and that's obviously for all this as well because that's a repeat. Um, but the woodwinds aren't, woodwinds aren't too bad. They come across pretty well. Yeah, because with the Mikado sounds, it's a very, uh, it's a louder attack and then it decays. Um, and that's not what this section should sound like. It should be a very full um, string sound, uh, a lot smoother than what it's coming through here. With the Mikado, you get the ba, ba, ba. It's sort of hard attack at the start and then dies um, as the note goes on. Whereas this one's, <laughs> oops, this one over here, it's kind of the opposite. It can sometimes have that softer start, but then the note holds through. Um, so I've tried to cut off that softer start so it's more even. Um, and I think that's better than um, how this would sound. Ooh, now what's going on there? Timpani. Okay. Um, yeah, and this is the same. I've already fixed that bit. Uh, this sounds very loud. You probably don't need... I presume it's first and second flute, but you probably don't need both of them. Um, just the one will do. And this is probably your volume changer. Yeah, we're getting little 
crescendos, which is fine. Yeah, so you can do that without the all these keyframes, um, which may make things look a little bit easier, a little bit simpler. Um, but it's it's such a subtle. It's only sort of going 10% anyway. Um, but anyway, you can just hook the keyframe straight up to the um, to this volume here. And just one less thing to worry about. I also think all these French horns need to be louder through here. It's only on 50. And of course these haven't got all their reverb changes on them, so that's why it sounds a bit, a bit empty. And um, that harp sounds... I think the harp's a bit too loud as well. For some reason it gets really loud. Uh, so you've got a crescendo. Yeah, so just those um, odd changes in volume, you want to try and cut out all of those because that's sort of, you want it to be smooth, particularly for this piece, smooth as silk. So yeah, it's the strings once again that are the issue here. We're back to the um, violin marcados. So yeah, if you um, just grab one of these and we change change them all over, and you want to do this for every every instrument really. <laughs> is to get that um get that reverb going and yeah change out the marcado strings for sustains and that sounds a little bit more like an orchestra it's much more graceful with the violins going violin note that's coming in uh, at a bad sound, but uh, I won't bother to go back to this at the moment. And now we're getting um, compression here. Um, so I want to talk about this. Um, it's usually caused by a timpani. Um, and the timpanis aren't the best in this. So you want to... Oh, we've got a big... Yeah, we've got, we've got all of this going on. So, um, I'm presuming that's applying to the timpani. Um, that's probably where the compression is coming from. It's usually from the bottom end. Uh, the bass drums, timpani, um, the main culprits. But then, it, this is the balancing act. It, you want it to be loud, but you can see you're getting the compression, so you've got to try and prioritise which are the ones, which are the instruments that you want to... Uh, be heard basically. Um, so this, I'm not sure what the issue is here, but this is what you know, this is what <laughs> this is what uh, coding in dream. This is what you know, music making in dreams is like. There's a lot of troubleshooting, and there's no um, textbook on it. You just have to listen and figure it out as best as you can as you go. So I get rid of this. Um, such long, um, what is it, the, the yeah there, <laughs> the holding bit, <laughs> once you've released it, the release length, the release length needs to be a lot shorter for that, and that'll probably stop a lot of that um, compression. I don't know why we've got the oscillator on on this either. I don't really like this timpani, I think there's a better timpani that I use. Um, if we have a look, there's timpani with rolls, which I'm not sure if that's the one that you've used actually, um, and then there's just normal... And is this one here? So not, yeah, this I think this is the one that I like. Um, which once again is going to have issues. And we'll get rid of the compression. Actually, we want this one to be quite quiet anyway, so we'll just we'll just turn it down and add some at the reverb. And we'll see how that comes through. <laughs> Still getting a little pop. 
pop there. Um, so you probably want to get rid of the heart because you don't really want that. A lot of these inner instruments you can probably um, cut down as well. Um, probably don't need all these Marcato ones as well. They're probably better off just as normal um, sustains. Oops, I probably just changed that one, didn't I? Ah, get rid of that. Go away. Oops, I just did everything. Um... Yeah, so that bit's not so great. I'm not. You'll have to spend a lot more time to try and um, sort out what the problems are and fixing that up. Um, so we'll move on for now. Yeah, once again, the harps. Where's the harp? Yeah, it's in there. It's probably a bit too loud. I really want the flute to carry more through all of this as well. The flute's got the melody and it's not very audible. And the and the oboe as well actually. Um, so I don't know why they're so quiet. They can definitely be a lot louder. get some brace notes in here that aren't happening. So these ones, I probably have the violin section on staccato. grab that. So we want the medium molecule version, that one, um, for all of these ones. And then once again you got to do your volume, you got to turn that down a bit, and then you got to do your reverb, and then you got to do your sample volumes. Where is it? Over here. Oh, whoops, too far. That one. And then you'd copy those all over. And then these ones, your viola section sh should probably be the legato one. Well, sustain. And the same for the um, cellos as well. Um, I won't bother with the... I'll just do the reverb. Which, uh, don't do that. And get rid of that variation slider. Just grab some reverb. And then cello section sustain as well. Now we've got to yeah, stop on the start of that sound wave as well, which we don't want. Some reverb and I did the volume, yeah. And then we'll copy that over and we'll see if that makes so the staccato is too loud. could do in that situation is we could do a copy um, we grab another viola and just double up yeah this is where you got the strings carrying the bulk of the heavy lifting here which is why it's sounding a bit odd this is not oh I've got too many there what have I done um, 
yeah, getting the strings to do the bulk of the heavy lifting can cause problems. Uh, why has that done that? Oh, I've made a mess of that. Um, and I've done them sustain. Let's scrap that and try again. Um, what we do is we grab all of these and then grab the Marcado ones from back here. And hopefully that mixture will make it sound better. It's a bit better. It's quite good, actually. This plays more into um, media molecule instrument strengths. You've got your um, pizzicato, you've got uh, woodwind solos, which work well, and you've got a bit of triangle as well, which is nice. So um, all you need to do to that is just add your reverb through that section, and um, that'll probably be okay. And this is about as far as you got. So, yeah, that's probably all I'm going to um, go over today. Um, anybody who's watching this, uh, if you've got any more questions, you can uh, always message me on PSN, Fim Speedway, or message me through Dreams on Fim Speedway, or over the YouTube comment section. I hope you learned a few things. Um, it was a pretty unorganized <laughs> tutorial. Um, I went into a lot of detail here. I didn't really know how it was going to pan out. Um, the first section was a bit more structured with a lot more general comments, which hopefully can apply to every piece of music. Um, and then I sort of went into a few specifics here, a few instrument choices. Um, even the yeah, the choice of piece is also very crucial. Um, so this might not be the best piece to show off um, your skills in Dreams. Um, definitely these string sections need a lot of, lot of tidying up. Um, hopefully the things that I've told you... Um, with the reverb and the sample sounds can help towards that. Um, but yeah, it's also about selecting the right type of string sound. So you're trying to get some grace note sounds in here. Um, that's always going to struggle you, unless you um, add the staccato section and, and put um, this one note here <laughs> as a staccato note. Um, if you want to go into that amount of fine detail, then the, those things m can come through. Um, whether it's worth it, um, that's going to be up to you. Um, those little details, but you know, sometimes the little details that um, can make all the difference. But anyway, that's all for now. Um, I hope it was useful, and I'll see you guys in the next video.